Hey guys, welcome to lesson 5 of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. And in this lesson, we are going to start our first Xcode project and build our first app. So if you've been following along, you should have Xcode 6 installed already. And when you open up Xcode, you're going to see a welcome dialog like this. And we're just going to select this option, create a new Xcode project. If you don't see this dialog, you can go up here to File, New, and project. So it'll do the same thing. So we're just going to create a new Xcode project. So the first dialog that you see will be one for choosing a template for your new project. Now the first thing you want to do if you don't see any of these templates is make sure that you're in the application section under iOS here on the left hand side and you should see these different templates available to you. Now we're going to start with the most basic one which is just gives you a single blank view for your project. Depending on what type of project we wanted to build, for example, if we wanted to build an app with tabs along the bottom, we could choose this template as a starting point. Uh, likewise, if we were building a page-based one or a master detail type of app, these may be better starting points. Now that's not to say that we can't get to these other uh, templates by choosing this one, it's just a better starting point. You know, we could still add a tab bar for our single view application. We could still add page-based navigation to our single view. It just depends which one is the best starting point for your app. So we're going to select single view application and we're going to click next. So we're going to go through these settings together and you want to pay attention to some of these settings because it may alter what you see in the next view. So for product name, that's just what our app is going to be named and I'm just going to type in hello world here. So your organization name is something that you uh, you can put anything in here. It could be your personal name, it could be your company's name. And as for your organization identifier, it's going to be used in conjunction with your product name to create a unique bundle or app identifier. So normally what people put is com dot and then either their name or company name and then it would follow the system where it would be com dot their company name dot their app name. Now the next two are uh, important. So for the language, we're going to be going through Swift. So you want to make sure you're selecting Swift for this language here. And for devices, we're only talking about iPhone at this point. So select the iPhone and you'll want to make sure that use core data is unchecked. So we're not going to go through that topic today. Click next. You can save it anywhere. I'm going to save it on my desktop. You want to make sure uh, before you click create there that this source control checkbox is unchecked as well. And source control is a way of storing and managing your code, tracking your changes as you progress in your project. Uh, but we won't be using it today here in this demo. And it may be a topic that we cover in the future. So I'm just going to click create. Okay, so let's go through some of the files in your new project. So at the very, very top, the root node is your project properties. So when you click this on the editor area over here, you're going to see all of your project configuration settings. And we'll be definitely using this area in the future. Uh, moving on, we have the app delegate. So the app delegate provides a chance for you to type in some code or logic uh, where you can handle different situations that arise in the lifetime of your application. For example, if you read some of these here, application did enter, enter the background, or will come back and enter the foreground, or did become active, or will terminate. So it, it gives you a chance, you can write code here, to maybe save that data, or restore some data, or uh, restore the last place, the last view the user was using. Uh, it gives you a chance to do something at different points in the application's lifetime. Uh, the second thing is the view controller. So we went over this in the model view controller or MVC design pattern in the last lesson. So this view controller manages the view. Now we get to the main dot storyboard and when you click this uh, your editor area turns into interface builder. So now you see uh, the view for your single view application and this is the view controller that manages this view. Now 
what is a storyboard? So the storyboard manages the flow of your application uh, in a visual manner. You see this arrow right here? Well, this arrow represents the starting point or the entry point of your application. And right now it's pointing to this view, which is managed by this view controller right here. Uh, it is possible when we build some more complex apps that we will have uh, multiple views and multiple view controllers. And this arrow will indicate you know, what the starting point is. Now here are some tips to navigate the storyboard. Uh, you can double click the area to uh, kind of zoom out or you can right click and you can pick a zoom level. You could double click and zoom back in. Okay, moving on, we have our image asset library. And in here, this is where we're going to add image assets to our project. And you can literally just create a new image set and drag and drop our assets in here. And then we can refer to them by their name that we give it here uh, in our code to access the image assets. So we're going to do this uh, in our demo projects in module two. And lastly, we have this launch screen.zib. And this is another interface builder file. And this just represents the, uh, the startup screen for our app. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is go back to main.storyboard. And we're going to do our hello world demo application. Now, if you've ever done any other programming education before, you may recognize that hello world is kind of the customary first app or first program. So that's what we're gonna do here, iOS style. Now we're looking at main.storyboard and in our editor, we see our view here. So what we're going to do is visually add a label to the view and just change the text of the label to say hello world and then we're gonna run our application. First thing you will wanna do in the lower right hand corner, if you remember, this is called the library pane. And if you don't see these elements that you know I have here, make sure that you're on this tab because there are a couple of different tabs you can be on here. And don't worry if it doesn't look like a list because there's another button here to change the view. Yours could look like this, just a grid of, uh, grid of elements or a listing of elements. So in this search box, you can kind of filter through the library. And I'm gonna type in label. And I'm just going to click this and drag it in the center. Now at this point, we can change the text of the label. So I'm just going to double click it and I'm gonna type in hello world. Next, we're actually going to just run our app and watch it in the simulator. So up here in the upper left hand corner, make sure that you've selected a simulator. So I'm, mine's on iPhone 6 and I'm just gonna hit run. It's gonna compile your application and then it's gonna launch the iOS simulator. Okay, so it's launching, it's loading our app. So you'll notice that we see the label in our view but it's kinda of not in the center, it's off to the side. Well, what happened? Because we actually had our label in the center here. So I'm gonna stop the running of our uh, application. Now, if you had trouble running your application or you had some error pop up, one thing that I would try is hit the simulator here and then there's an option to reset it. It's just to reset all of the content and settings. If you go up to the menu here, it's gonna ask you, are you really sure you wanna reset it? And you hit reset, and it's just gonna reset it to its uh, original default blank slate state. And then you can try running it again. Okay, but now let's look at the issue of the label positioning. So the reason that the label is off-centered is because iOS uses a system called auto layout to determine where the element should sit. And auto layout describes the position of the element based on something called constraints. And we're going to take a look at that now. So click your label, and then down here in the lower right hand corner, you're going to see this icon which says align. So I'm gonna hit that. And we're going to add two alignment constraints. So I'm gonna check that horizontal center in the container. 
and vertical center in the container. And we're going to click this button, add these two constraints. Okay. So once I did that, you'll notice that this trigger or this line shows you the constraints for our element, which is in the center. And you'll notice here in this pane on the left, you can open this and you can see that there are two constraints for this label. And if you don't see this pane, it's this button right here that will open and close that. Now if I run it again, you'll see that the label is actually in the center because it's going to, when it displays that label, it's going to read those constraints and it's going to, based on those constraints, vertically and horizontally center that element. And the reason that this is good, rather than positioning exactly where we put it, the reason why auto layout is good is because it works the same way on any screen, right? So I can rotate it and it would still be in the center. Uh, I could have a bigger screen or a smaller screen and based on those constraints or those rules, it would still be in the center. Now that Apple is creating multiple screen sizes, it's even more important to use auto layout. So in order to rotate your simulator, you can actually go here, up hardware, and you can select rotate left or right, or you can just hold down command and press left or right. So there you have it. Congratulations, you've created your first simple app. In the next lesson, we're going to start module two, and we're going to start looking at creating more complex apps where you'll have to write Swift code.